Okay, Becca, so we've got your um, your poem, Rouen, by May Wedderburn Cannon, one yes. of the only few women in the anthology. How did you find this poem and preparing your presentation on it? I really like this poem because it was from like another pers- 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 perspective. Yeah. Because we're always, like you said, there's quite a lot of male dominant male dominated mm. literature mm. so it's nice to like from a woman's side and also she served as a VAD right what's that uh, alright um, it's a voluntary aid detachment okay and again this brought like another aspect and another perspective onto like the war because you're getting a perspective from someone who helped like contribute trying to amend those soldiers mm. and I thought that um, I thought that the poem really reflected her role in the war in in that her role wasn't like the obvious male let's sign up let's go to war let's run fight hers was a completely different role because it, it had to be really thought about and and can you explain the difference between you know, um, men signing up and women? I think in their roles? for her, like voluntary aid mm. service, she chose to like get herself involved in the war instead of mm. the soldiers who were kind of forced or if they didn't want to, they were kind of guilt ridden into mm. joining the war. And I think that difference really makes this poem even more emotive because she's chosen to put herself in this situation. Rather, some soldiers like Wilfred Owen, mm. who didn't choose to witness the things he did, rather she did. So again, mm. it just shows kind of her her courageousness. I was going to say, do you think that makes her a stronger character? Um, yeah, I think so. More interesting, maybe. I think yeah, it makes it makes her a bit more interesting because she's kind of I don't know, she's kind of making herself gain more out of being involved in the war instead mm. of your typical soldier. Mm. Okay, so talk us through any bits of the poem you want to look at. Um, when I first read the poem, it really intrigued me, and I felt that the way it, the way the, there's 13 stanzas, and the way it kind of, like, flowed was, I felt, a part of her journey. Mm. And there's a lot of talk about um, the time of day, like, it starts early morning, right. and then um, quiet night, and um, I think the timing of the day, on a large, on a, a wider um, scale, could represent her time in Rouen, and um, the different sort of days that she experienced, and kind of a typical day of what she had to experience. So this is where she was based, Rouen yes. in France. Yeah, that's where and, she and was based. And the poem does what? It goes through a typical day or a couple of days, or I think it's quite ambiguous. I think it's how the reader will interpret okay. it. The first time that I read it, I thought it was just one typical day. Mm. But then as I kind of gained more from the poem, it made me kind of think about it as her her general kind of experience. Okay. And then she says, and I really like this quote, um, which she says, I can't find it. But it was just about um, how she doesn't want ruin to be ruined. And I think that ruin to be ruined... (laughs) Um, but I think that kind of makes it seen on like a wider kind of scale because she's talking about the place, not just mm. necessarily the time scale of which she was there for. So it's the place itself that's become dear to her. Yeah. Rather than and I, and the, the, the kind of crusade she might have been on as a VAD. But it's actually she... Yeah, it's, I see what you're saying. It's, it's the actual pl- this this place that they're going to, to protect and... And I think that's conveyed with the um, repetition of can you recall or can you remember, can I forget. I think she's. it's always going to be dear to her, the place, as well as what she did to help mm. those soldiers. So asking those rhetorical questions to the reader, have you have you mentioned that in your PowerPoint at all? Or? Um, yeah, I said that it makes yeah. it known that um, the events that she witnessed were traumatic and that she'll never forget Mm. and the first time I read it I kind of read it as in kind of a low tone Mm. rather the more times I go over this poem I realize maybe what do you mean low like um can you 
can you remember maybe sympathizing with the reader or even with herself oh i see so like a calm yeah a calm gentle reflective i see yeah. what you mean by that a very not depressed mm. but a very down kind of tone mm, melancholy yeah mm. and um, rather the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth times i've read it i've kind of see it more as not an aggressive tone but um, especially as with our wider mm. literature, there's been a couple of times that we've come across a lot of soldiers, they, they feel a bit uneasy when um, those who weren't involved in the war talk about the war I see. with their patriotism. Mm. So maybe this is her response to those who didn't experience what she experienced. And can you recall those mornings? Well, how can you have an answer when you didn't experience it? Oh, I like it. So... I think it's very ambiguous, and that's another reason why I really like this poem, because everybody's going to interpret yeah. it really differently. Um, yeah, I like that. So she, you're saying that her, her quite innocent que questions, can you forget, can you see, can you recall, maybe might become accusatory. Yeah. Because somebody who hasn't experienced it, or how can you... Yeah, I see what you're saying. Excellent. Excellent. Anything else? I really like the language that she uses. Why? Because I think that it's just really effective. And my favourite quote from the poem is, um, men who came from darkness went back to dark again. And that really, it really struck... Stands a nine. Yeah, it really mm. struck out to me because it's it's the truth. They, It was even like she's implying that it was a blessing to get injured because you, you go away from the horrors mm. of the war. But then again, as soon as you get better you have to go back again mm. and that also kind of parallels with the, the journey that's like the structure conveys and the idea of like um these soldiers come and some get better and some don't mm. and i just think that it really it really stands out and again links to our like wider literature mm. and i think that also with the imagery there's a lot of things that stand out like um the red cross obviously that stood for her well the role that she had within the war as mm. um helping aid the patients but also um red being such a dominant color and also being in the form of a cross kind mm. of made me think of faith and maybe the red could convey faith there being a lack of faith or faith's in danger and then mm. that links to um the themes of questioning questioning the war and the contrast in opinions mm. do you remember that scene in bird song with the padre yeah. When they go over the top and he, he throws his, his cross away, yeah. So, so that's a good point for section A, with wider reading. Yeah, okay. Um, again, there's um, a kind of, there's a stanza here. It says, can you forget their passing, the cheering and the waving, the little group of people at the door of the shed, the sudden awful silence and the last train swung to darkness, and the lonely desolation and the mocking of the stars over overhead stands at eight yeah um that kind of made me think and have in my mind kind of the sense of the past soldiers who are now ghosts yeah and the way it's written uh, the list of the passing the cheering mm. and the waving kind of conveys that sort of mist and you can actually feel that the presents are going and yeah. and um the cheering and the waving could just convey how precious time is and how even though they're in such awful conditions they're still trying to make the most out of it and they're still trying to be positive mm. and um that kind of when i first read it the um first kind of five or standards were quite positive mm. and then as soon as it starts to mention the darkness i think the tone of the of the poem kind of really changes mm. and um the use of the ellipsis in the last stanza kind of really makes it evident that that the that the, that the tone's changed definitely and um it's kind of for me that last stanza kind of acted as a conclusion yeah, absolutely and the ellipsis kind of really separates it from the rest of the poem mm -hmm. and um you could even argue that that is her actually saying goodbye to her memories and to ruin as she believes that ruin's been ruined yeah my heart goes out to ruin and she picks up the darkness theme again when the world slips slow to darkness. Yeah, and the yeah. repetition. Hello. Just recording a podcast. 
That's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll edit it out. <laughs> but it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. I'm going, it's I'm right, going, right, I'm right, just right. changing okay. my shoes. Okay. Um, yeah, anything else? I think that's about it. I don't know what else I've put. Language, structure, uh, imagery. I think we've said everything. Brilliant. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. yeah. I think I did it better this time around than, than in That's the what lesson. people are saying. <laughs> Athena. No, it's better than my pretty. I think, that's that's speaks, I think that the, the pressure's <laughs> been taken off. Yeah. No, that was fantastic. Thank you, Becca. Thank, Thank you. you. Don't move, don't move.